I'm Angela Morgan, and we're back with Raising Energy on Rogers TV Roundtable, and I have some very, very special guests tonight. We're going to be talking about self-love and empowering techniques, techniques to make you feel good, and I don't think I could have found three better people to talk about this with. So we have um, Zmir, who is uh, uh, going to be working with us tonight, as well as Saul, if you want to give us a wave so everybody knows who you are and jessica hello jessica now we're we're really really um lucky because at rogers we can you know we're, we're we can just ask anybody from anywhere via zoom to come and join us so we have these three wonderful people who are from the states uh who are talking to me tonight all of them connected in one way or another to toronto whether it's through clients or family so we are a global community any of my guests who are on this show are global so I want everyone to know that because if you're impressed with them, which you will be, I want you to go to their Instagram pages and their website and check out a little bit more about them and Clubhouse as well, because that's actually where I met you guys. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to, uh, I'm going to give it over to Saul and she's going to tell us a little bit about who she is and what she does. And then we're just going to go to Zmir and then we're going to go to Jessica. Awesome. Awesome. I am so happy to be here. So thank you so much for this beautiful show. This is so awesome. So what do I do? I am a psychic medium. I am a certified life coach. I do. I'm a Reiki 2 practitioner. I also love to teach psychic development and mediumship. So those are the things that I do. Um, it's been a passion of mine ever since I was little. So yes. So you, do you do teach classes online as well? I didn't know that. I'm beginning to start um, soon. Nice. So it is coming soon. I have the school, you know, ready. I have um, like a whole um, curriculum and everything, but that is coming very soon, um, probably in the month of March, that would be available. But so far, you know, I have, um, I'm a spiritual mentor, so I have um, people that I mentor. Excellent. Nice. Thank you. And Zmir, tell us about you. Hello, my name is Amir Calais. I am a shamanic lyricist. I go by that. Um, I believe I was in Soul's Room when I got spiritual lyricist, and I'll kind of change it to shamanic lyricist because I am a shaman, right? I am a prophet. I am a seer. I am clairvoyant. Um, I am a feng shui guide. I am a tear decorator. I am a fashion designer. I am everything and nothing at all. And um, you can contact me. I can give you intuitive readings, give you tarot readings, and give you oracle readings. But I love to come from the Akashic records. I love coming from within and not using using external tools because they are me. So I'm very, very appreciative to be here. Thank you. Oh, we're so happy to have you too. And you're probably one of the most positive guys and, and, and spirits I've ever met. You just, blah, you're just, wow. From the minute I met you, it was like, oh, this guy's energy is so cool. It's so awesome. Jessica, tell us about you. Hello, everyone. Well, it's so nice to be with all of you guys. And thank you for inviting us. I really appreciate it. Well, my name is Jessica. And what am I? A little bit of everything, I will say. I work one on one with clients when it comes to everything about subconscious reprogramming, how to learn to love themselves through a journey of going within and loving themselves unconditionally. I'm a Nusui Holy Reiki Fire Certify as well. I also got certification for Egyptian Reiki. Um, I'm also developing my psychic gifts as we're speaking and other gifts that you get as you're doing the work. So yeah, that's what I love to do. And I'm here to be of service. And your energy is awesome. Thank you for being with us, all three of you tonight. I really appreciate you. And it's really cool because... My shows are usually very geared towards psychic work, intuitive work, um, you know, working with animals, all that kind of stuff. And I thought today it would be so much fun to do something about positivity and unlocking that. And as you're speaking, I thought about this this afternoon, it's still about psychic work. It's still about intuition. It's still about, as you said, Samir, going within. And that's really, really important because the reality is, is that that's where real 
positivity starts. It's not about, hey, let's be happy every day. It's about, hey, you know what? Let's let's do some real soul mm-hmm. searching so we know our truth, which is the catalyst for us feeling good and being happy in our lives. How do you guys feel about that? Ooh. Anybody? Popcorn style. <laughs> um, I guess what I'm, what I'm saying, yeah, what I'm saying is, do you guys believe that the foundation of positivity is just sitting with your truth, good, bad, and ugly? Yes. 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 Okay. yes. I know it. I know it. Definitely. I know it. Yeah, well, what does definitely. that mean to you? What does that mean to you guys to be able to go and sit with your truth? Let's start with you, Zmir. Um, what it means to me is, uh, and gratitude, thank you for that, uh, bubbling up. I just wanted to give the queens, like, maybe they got something safe first. But no, I, I see, I really do see it as the word that keeps coming to me is self-care, right? Um, it's, 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 it's like this level of self-care where you build this self-worth and value in yourself and you're able to not be like swayed by anybody outside of you. You, you're, you're, you know, it's like, that's where your joy resides. You know what I'm saying? Like people are looking for joy outside of themselves where the joy actually resides within them. Happiness fuels that joy within you. So you are attracting happy moments, happy experiences to fuel the joy. But mm. uh, the going within is going to your promised land. It's going into your heaven. You know, that's I how I kind that. of see it. Yeah, I love that. I love that idea of, of truth is your heaven. Truth is your promised land. I love that. So what does that mean to you to sit in your truth? Oh my gosh. Um, as I was, when I was little, one of the songs that came that I always loved, I loved singing it. I loved hearing it. And it's this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. And it carried throughout my whole entire life. And um, I would look at people because I was very curious about people and and why they are the way they are and why they act the way they act. And so for me, I would like zoom in. That was like, I didn't know that's what you would call intuition or whatever, but you know, some people, they would have this, this um, persona that they would carry, but I would always see beyond that. And Mm -hmm. so I always, always wondering about everybody's life. Because I was like, I have a light. And as I was a child, I was like, this little light of my, I kept, that's how I just strolled around wor- the world, mm-hmm. the life in general. So um, what does it mean to me? I mean, it means everything to me. It's who you are, your essence, your beauty, um, the beauty without the beauty, the the crying, the tears, the 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 joy, the moments that, you know, you share with each other, the connection mm-hmm. from soul to soul. Um, it's just, it's, it's everything. It's, it's so beautiful. I mean, you know, even in those dark moments, it's beautiful. Yeah. Even in those dark moments, it's beautiful because, yes. you know, I, I tell everybody this is like, you know, plants grow in the dark. You, they grow in the dark. And it's like, you know, you don't know what beautiful plant you're going to come out of or, or anything. So there, there is beauty in darkness. So, so yes. It's That's everything. awesome. I love that you say that. And acknowledging that is so important, that whole essence of, you know, there is the light in the darkness. I remember when I was at my darkest time, um, you know, that was when I met one of the very first spirits I ever met. And they said, there's no such thing as a problem in life, only opportunities to learn and grow. And yeah. so now I take those dark moments, I take that darkness and I go, okay, really, that's cool. That's very cool. What do I have to learn here? What do we have to learn here? Yes. Jessica, talk to us about truth. Oh, wow. For me, it's basically a conclusion of Actually, I concur with everything they say, hmm. but it's me finding also the awareness. So for me, it started kind of like with what you said in the darkness and so to mention in the darkness. I grew up, even though right now I'm in the States, I'm in California, I grew up in El Salvador during the war. So hmm. since childhood, I started noticing that I would not look at the outside. And when I started sitting with myself and understanding and analyzing the life and situations that we're going through, I realized that in childhood, I didn't express nervousness. When I used, should have been like feeling sad or depressed as a little kid, I would start laughing and giggling. And I found it really awkward because I would hear bombs. 
and I would hear all this bunch of stuff during the war in El Salvador, and I was that little kid happy inside. Then as I started growing up, I started noticing that I was giving a lot of attention outside. You know, just like So said, I wanted to be a psychologist. I wanted to find out about how does the brain function? Why do I act this way? Why did I do this decision? And then little by little, I started sitting on my self-care, my, I would call it my own standards. And, you know, as soon as I rise, wake up with gratitude, you know, not one, not worried about what's external or what the world that is outside of me, yeah. but have a standard in which I rise and I pray and I meditate and I get my mind right. Like I even have a standard, even before I pick up the phone or connect to the internet, I'm like, I should have done this. I should have done this. But also for me, because it keeps me some kind right. of alignment and balance that yeah. I'm in the flow of what is makes me happy now. I don't seek external for other people. I do what I know what makes me happy and what I want to do every single day. So that's how it's been living in my truth. I will I will tell you, and that's beautiful. Each of you kind of piggybacked on, on the other, which was beautiful. I will show you what I feel truth is. I, I will show you right now. There it is. <laughs> that's true. And, and I say this because if you watch an animal, they don't know how to do anything but live in that. And so for me sitting here, you know, I'm thinking to myself, what is, what is my truth? What does that mean to be to me? And all my life, I've heard this over and over and over again, just be, just be, you know? And then when you start to work with animals, you know, I sit with my snake a lot and he just is, he doesn't try to be anything else. He doesn't try to be happy. He doesn't try to be sad. You know, he doesn't try to be hungry. He just is. And those are his truths. And what I have found over the years and in my life is that we're so intuitive and instinctual that as we follow that each moment changes and we follow that truth. So I'm a Gemini. I'm really good at moving from thing to thing, to thing, to thing, but it can drive people crazy. It can drive people crazy because I'm like, well, yeah, but I'm just, I'm living in the moment right now. I'm just being, and they're just like, okay, but we have to do this and we have to do that. And we have to do the other. And I guess for me, it's like, okay, there are the have tos, but if I just be those have tos will start to flow. Right. And all of a sudden it's like, okay, I'm just being, oh, okay, look, that, that's coming to me right now. And I feel like I want to do it. And then that comes to completion. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I, I feel like getting to that next step. Right. And I'm actually joyful, even paying bills. Like I'm actually, I love paying bills because I know that whatever I use that, here you go. This is, I'm free of that. I've done it. I've used it. It's, it's done. And I feel joyful about it because I've moved from thing to thing or done it when I feel like doing it. Um, and how do you feel about that? Just living an intuitive lifestyle. Do you guys get to live an intuitive lifestyle where you just feel, where you feel your way through? So let's start with you this time. Do you live a full <laughs> lifestyle? Oh my gosh. Yes, I do. I do. And I can definitely, my dad is Gemini. Um, mm. I'm Aquarius. So, and then my South node is in Gemini. So I can relate to how you mean, you mean moment to moment to moment. And um, it, it is, it is a wonderful, wonderful place to be, to live intuitively because when you live intuitively, then synchronicity plays. You can play with synchronicity and have fun with it. So that's one of the things that I've learned about living an intuitive lifestyle. And, you know, like now it's like we're doing um, 40 days of love. So the first 10 days I, I felt intuitive. I was like, you know what? For the first 10 days of, of my 40 day experience, I am going to intuitively not eat. I'm going to drink my green smoothie. I'm going to, you know, this is what I was like. And then I was like, okay. And then the next 10 days, I'm going to go hiking. I'm going to be in the mountains. I'm going to do something for my physical body. But it's just like living intuitively allows those, that synchronicity to play with you. Because, because when you, yeah, yeah. Cause even with love, you know, even with love or in friendships, you know, you, you, you're on this intuitive walk or on this intuitive 
app, as we would say. You don't know who you're going to meet. You don't know what, you're, you know, I always say you might be next to your best friend and you don't even know it yet. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. That's so true. I so agree with that. Jessica, how do you feel? Do you feel like you live an intuitive lifestyle? And what is that like for you? I started living an intuitive lifestyle. Before I used to analyze and want to micromanage and control everything. Yet when I started just trusting and feeling and going through life, like I started using this new word that I always say, I'm flowing now. I'm mm -hmm. just flowing. I'm trusting. I'm surrendering. I don't question. I noticed that I was in the right place at the right time, meeting the right person. And the abundance and everything else was just flowing that I was like, when I was resting and when I was doing things that I had to rewire, mm -hmm. you know, going from program and all of that to think less, feel more, think mm -hmm. less, feel more. <laughs> ah. and, and I love it, honestly. It's freeing. It's liberating. liberating. It is. Yeah. It That's is. It it's is. so freeing. You know, I, I totally agree with that. And I love the words that you're using, you know, the idea of flow and fluidity. And that's only something that I'm starting to work with now, too. You know, that the the, the world is a fluid motion and words mm -hmm. are so important. And we're going to get to that, too. Zmir, what's an intuitive lifestyle look like for you? And do you live an intuitive lifestyle? Of course. I know you I do. Even be on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I am a cancer, Capricorn cancer. So oh, nice. when it comes to intuition and flowing with my energy and flowing with my emotions, it is very easy for me to do that. And one thing I've been learning um, in this intuition is to um, clip certain thoughts, right? Because being in a relationship and you have an, uh, when you have a partner who is also intuitive, she's a seer, a lot of our contrast comes from us finishing, finishing each other's sentences, mm -hmm. trying to read each other, telling each other what we feel in the spirit. And then, it, then we receive it as, oh, you trying to tell me what to do. Oh, no, you think oh, on me. You're judging me. You know, are you being intrusive? That's my information. Yeah. I want that. I was going to divulge that to you later <laughs> on today, you know. Uh, so it's like that. Or, you know, it's like we. So how do you do problem. that, though? How do you live? Okay, so so she's got her intuitive way of being. You have your intuitive way of being. So I guess when you two are are in alignment with your truth, you keep each other in line with your truth because when you're in alignment yep. with the truth, then it connects with each other. So yes. you're both working yes. in, in synchronicity. Yes. Right? Yep. That, and, and that alignment, that alignment looks like us staying in our own lane, yeah. minding our own business, <laughs> focusing on our own purpose and path. That's exactly why I tell her, like, no, focus on you. Focus on you. No, don't focus over here. Cause when you focus over here, now you in my zone, and now we're comparing and contrasting, and now we in three D. Now we we're bound to have contrast. So just staying in that five D intuitive place is almost like uh, a sense of discipline, right? A sense of like self discipline. And yes, I have the information, but it doesn't need to be divulged right now. That yes. I need to be patient on when the energy comes to match that thought, and say this is the time to share it. Okay, and those times when I share it, it's perfect. But anytime, yes. second before or after, it's egoic and it's a contrast and it's an argument. Yeah. I, so I agree with you. It's everything. so funny. I learned that a long time ago where if I sit in my truth, the other person in the situation, regardless of what their truth is, will at least come half or part way, mm -hmm. right? As long as I know my truth. If they know their truth, that's wonderful. That's a song. That's a song in itself. But it's a rare occasion for me to sit fully in my truth and my partner to sit fully in their truth at the same time, right? So I agree with you. You go off to your thing. I'll go off to my thing. And then we'll come together when the opportunity arises so we can be in sync. And I have a hard time with it because I'm a bit of a control control freak so I'm just like okay I want it now and then my fiance will look at me go, yeah what about living feel why are you in your head and I'm like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you know it's good because our partners and our situations and our colleagues keep us real you know and I think that's a very very important thing to um to talk about now 
I find this interesting. All of us earlier were talking about having pets. And I did want to talk about this really quickly because everybody knows I'm an animal communicator. So pets are my thing. How does having an animal play into you feeling good about life, about your positivity? How does an animal empower your life? Anybody go, let's go with Jessica this time. We've done smear, we've done solids. Let's start with Jessica. <laughs> oh my God, my pets are hilarious. I see them as teachers because yeah. they they do the most. They're like, they're me. You know, they have sometimes my, my habits. They observe me. Sometimes I see them all looking at me and I'm like, hi. Um, they really make me happy because I just have laughed. Sometimes I just turn off my phone, turn off everything and just observe them. Yeah. I love how animals are just in the moment, so innocent, so playful. And I'm just kind of like, huh. Like I was literally thinking, I think it was the yesterday or two days before that I was like, I was missing out many years when I didn't have a pet, when I didn't have a cat, when I didn't, you know, I had a dog and unfortunately he passed away. So I was in that trauma, you know, that, oh no, I don't want my kids to feel that. But it was my youngest daughter that brought in a stray cat from the street and I ended up with more. And now I love them. They are my babies. They are like, they have their own place where they sleep. They're always comfortable. I'm always take. I, I love them. They and make me very. What does that do for you? Like, what does that? How does that? What does that do for your own empowerment? What does that do for you as a, as a as a, a an energy worker? As an energy worker, you know, they keep me grounded, mm -hmm. and they carry me in the present moment. So I could be aware. Like sometimes, even through my cat, when I'm working on energy. I'll observe them and I'll close my eyes or they'll come around and then I'm like, oh, this is what they're representing. So they they can basically, I will say they're beautiful guys and they're always trying to assist me because of the work that I do. I also notice that. Even when I have come back from my dreams, they could pick up the energy I have around me. And yeah. I'm like, oh, you guys can see it? Okay, you know, I laugh sometimes. They're very about validating, yeah. <laughs> incredibly yeah. validating and and soul what about you tell us about your animals and how they affect your life as an intuitive and as somebody who works with this um <laughs> they are beautiful creatures um and they i don't even call them creatures i, I call them my friends yeah um because i had a, a moment where I was looking into one of my cat's eyes, Bill, um, and I was looking at him and he was looking at me and, and we had this conversation. It was like this conversation about breathing, mm -hmm. um, how I wasn't breathing properly. And I heard him and then he sat on my chest and he was like, see, and I felt his stomach and he was like, you feel how my stomach goes? And he and I'm sitting here and, and I had a boyfriend at the time and he was like, why don't you guys get a room? Because <laughs> that's how connected we were. We were just sitting there breathing together. Yes. And um, they bring so much joy to my life. I don't even, you know, I hear them. I hear what they say. I have a fish who is country. Um, one day I walked by the fish tank and he was like, howdy. And I was looking around and I was like, did he? And then I was like, no, I'm just. And I'm looking, I look at the fish and he's like, he's like, yeah, I said it, you know, how, yeah. how are you doing? You know? And I was like, <laughs> so it was just, they bring so much joy and love to my life. My cat, um, Bella, she, um, did, she did some type of Reiki on me the other night. She was purring. Um, and I, and I didn't even realize I was going to have stomach pain and she sat on me and she would not get off. And she was like, oh, no, she started purring. She started doing her her thing that she does with that. And then that morning when I got up, I was like, oh, my gosh, my stomach was hurting. 
Yeah. She does and this, treatment. And that is so important because as energy workers, they actually do, like you said, Jessica, too, they assist us even when we don't realize we need it. And it's so amazing, too, because I find with animals, each of them has their job. They come into our life, not only just at a particular time and they choose us, but they have their own job that actually heightens who we are. And this is for everybody out there, like everybody that's watching the show right now, take Take a look at your animal if you have one. That animal is there for you to assist you in your energy. It's to bring up your vibration. You know, my cat Whitey, she is amazing. And when I'm really low, she comes and she's with me. But it's amazing how I have a set time. I like to go to sleep. And if I'm going to go over that time, she'll come and yell at me. Like she'll she'll actually come mm -hmm. and crap. And I'm like, oh, is it really that time? And I'll look and I'll go, oh, I'm so sorry. It's like feeding. You know, they know when they're feeding us. But she'll come and she. She will give me what for, but I can hear her. Right. So I know what she's saying. I'm like, okay, you know what? Back off lady. Like really yes. back off. But <laughs> it's that joy and the humor that comes from the conversation yes. too that make me go, okay, you know what? I'm in a really better place now. I can go to sleep peacefully, you know, and this is mm -hmm. what they do. Zmir, talk to us about how your animals add to your positive life. I'm gonna do my very best to be short. Let me stop. Uh, no, um, something that something that everybody said, but something that Soul said that cut, stuck out to me when she was talking about the fish. She's like, "Oh, you start, you talking to me?" And I, I, it brought me back to my experiences when I'm decorating homes and I hear a vase say something because everything has a consciousness. So I hear. I speak to lamps and lamps speak to me. And it's like, oh, what you want to do? You don't, you're tired of that nightstand? You want to go in the living room? Okay, oh, let's yeah. go. You know, so like, so when it comes to animals, it's the same thing, right? Yeah. It's the same thing. Like you could trust in, in that, what they'll call inanimate object or a lamp or something. And you can listen and hear its voice and hear its request. Then how easy is it to hear a pet that can actually purr and talk to you and uh -huh. vibrate and, and come lay their hands on your chest when your chest hurt, come lay their hands on your leg when you have sore legs. They really just know exactly what to do. And they kind of show us to remain in the present moment. Now, one thing I realized, because we have, we actually so funny that we're talking about pets because last night before we went to bed, we channel like Brandy and I, my partner and I, we channel like every night. Um, and we will like stay up. It's just like a natural thing. It's our intimate time. It's what we do to be intimate. Like we will just lay in the bed yeah. and just like breathe and just like speak, like let spirit speak, speak through us uh, back and forth. And we would just share information from the Kashi records. So last night spirit had her remind. Wait, 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 wait. before we go there, wait, let's, let's leave them hanging. Yes. We're going to go to a break. We're going to come back and you're going to tell us Perfect. your story. So that means you all have to come yeah, back yeah. to hear <laughs> what happened last night to Zmir. <laughs> all right. So when we come back, we're going to hear what happened last night with Zmir. So look, everybody, if you want to find out about all of us, go to Clubhouse, Instagram. We're going to give you more details about that in the second half. And we will be right back after these messages with Raising Energy on Rogers TV round table utilize that thought in that moment in time that hey i remember when i was on a mountain and i sat there and i remember the warmth warmth against my skin i remember hearing the birds i remember being in that time and being so um quiet and calm within my spirit and i can just go there anytime you want to on Raising Energy on Rogers TV Roundtable with our special guests, Saul Smear and Jessica. Now, we ended our first segment with a story from Zmir, and I'm not going to let anybody else hang. So, Zmir, what happened last night? Tell us. So, while in the Akashic Records last night, intimately in the Akashic Records... <laughs> That's night. I should probably say this grand rising because it was like two this grand rising, 2 a.m. So um, we was going, her spirit, like spirit was like, go back to your journal. So she had wrote in her journal. We, we kind of came together and realized that our pets are direct reflections of aspects of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we, we like, and like a year ago, we wrote down like each characteristic, like, you know, for example, Cassie, our miniature schnauzer who just turned 12, she reminds me of uh, both Brandy and I, 
Like she has characteristics of both of us. She can be very calm, but also very demanding. Um, and we have Elvis, who is our black cat. We also call Black Panther, you know, ah. and he is very like, he is very brandy. He's brandy all the way. Like when he wants love, he comes in, he's forcing like, you're going to give me a rub. When he wants food, he's going to meow to us. Like he's very talkative. He's the one that's like trying to go outside. He's the one that's trying to like catch the birds. He's the one that's like, I, I, every day I say, like the, yesterday he was trying to open the doorknob for the room. And I'm like, he's going to have to start paying bills or something because he's, he's, <laughs> he's trying to open doors now. He know how to, he know how to use his own bathroom. Flush, so I'm going to teach him how to flush. The <laughs> so we have like these characters and then Garfunkel. Garfunkel is as much like, um, as much like all of us, all the, all the animals plus us because he, he has all these characteristics. And then we have Simon who is much like me. He's very reflective. He's very meditative. He's always been that way oh, since we got yeah. him. We catch him like scrying, which is like meta like staring into fire flames. He stares into candles. He stares into mirrors. He stares into water. We just catch him in a corner, just staring into a corner. And I'm like, yeah, that's in me. both worlds. That's, yeah, that's I, and I'm like, that's my that's my baby. He comes to me all, always. He he over he prefers me over brandy. Like <laughs> he like he sleeps on my shoes, stuff like that. Like he wants to be in my essence. Like, so um, we noticed last night that that relevance line was like, okay, spirit is telling us like, we are everything and nothing at all. Like we are connected to our pets, but they are also us. And they're learning something through us as we learn something through them, which is why we call them familiars because they are very familiar to us. And they, they, they teach us to stay in the now. That's like the main, that's like one of the main attributes of animals. Like they teach you to stay very present and, very like like so when we channeled last night we noticed that the babies were rested but at a certain point within the channel and this happens often they start running around they start play fighting they start like um, playing with their ball like, and it's like high, right? yes and, and it's like high. two in the morning it's two yeah. in the morning i know they're sleepy they was just laying down resting and then all of a sudden we're channeling the energy is getting high and now all three you can only imagine three cats running around after each other like play fighting holding on to each other so i, I was telling brandy i was like what's going on i was like babe that's just spirit and they're reacting and they're showing us how receptive they are to the spirit yes. so we, we know who us? we are you know, yes, like it teaches us, we know where we are. Yeah, us, and it's yep. a reflection yep. of who we are. Yes. I agree with you a million percent. Um, our cats are the same way, and our snakes are. My snake is the same way. They are a reflection of us, and I don't think anybody's actually ever brought that up on a show. So I appreciate you for that, um, and and I do agree with that a hundred percent. And it's funny how. You know, I have my animals moving around at night and that kind of stuff, and that is when I do a lot of my work too. And in the morning, I'm refreshed. I feel great. I feel amazing. I find that when Whitey sleeps with me, I feel different in the morning than when Yoshi, my other cat, sleeps with me because they're, they're vastly different energies too. So I find that my positivity level, especially when I wake up, depends. It now depends on Whitey curling up with me at least for five minutes or cuddling with my partner for five minutes for me to start the day. You know, so I agree with you 100%. These cats are, or these animals are really a part of who we are and they're open and receptive and teaching us to be the same. Um, okay, so now that we're segueing back into people, one of the things I wanted to talk about in the second segment is our audience out there would love to hear some of your thoughts on how to stay in that vibe of positivity, how to stay feeling empowered. You know, we've talked a little bit about how animals can help us with that and you know, how do you start your mornings? How do you go through your day? A lot of people look at me and go, oh, well, it's so easy for you to say because you're on that path, right? This is your life. This is what you do. But you know what? This is all of our lives. And this is, this is not something meant for the special or the gifted. So I want to hear what your thoughts are on what you can tell people or what you can share with others as to how they can stay or work with their positivity in their daily lives. Um, let's start with you, Saul. Oh my gosh. You know, there's so many things that you can do um, even adding arts and crafts, spiritual arts and crafts. I make wands, I make smudge wands, um, I make oils, um, things that you can do, affirmations, music. I love flute music, American Indian flute music. Um, 
all of those things are part of your spirituality and your walk that will keep you centered and into, you know, doing something spiritual. You don't always have to be burning candles or doing a ritual or doing something, you, you know, you can just utilize that thought in that moment in time that, hey, I remember when I was on a mountain and I sat there and I remember the warmth, warmth against my skin. I remember hearing the birds. I remember being in that time and being so um, quiet and calm within my spirit. And I can just go there anytime you want to. And I was, uh, yeah, yeah, I was just talking to a client about that this morning. You know, um, you know, archive four or five memories in your life. Keep them in your back pocket for those moments when you're forgetting or when you need to draw something out so that you have them, right? So that's beautiful. And my son used to have a little um, a little memory stone and he'd pull out his memories and he would be grateful. And I said, well, why isn't it a gratitude stone? And he goes, because it is. And he's six years old. It is a gratitude stone, but it's also a memory stone because it has my memories. I'm like, okay, I'm setting this child. So yes, yes memory stone, you're good. Um, yes. And, and one more thing before yeah, no. and even um oils essential oils um so i started making meditation sprays for some of my clients because they they one of the things they said is i i don't know how to stay here i don't know how to stay here so i'm like use essential oils that will help you stay there so whatever it is you know use that use water you it's just so many things you can use and, and with oils too, people tend to think that it's really complicated and it's not like you can say, you can actually go to the internet, right? Like how would people use oils if they're say beginners? Uh, a diffuser, you can use them in a diffuser, um, you know, and simple as just put, put, you know, get a napkin, put a dab in there and just, yeah. and then you, you go from there, you know, mm -hmm. there's so many ways you can use them. Now, you said that you actually work with oils and make oils. Do you sell them as well? Like, when, can people find you? Mm -hmm. I do sell them on Etsy, and I, I also sell meditation sprays as well. I okay. spray the area, and then the smell lingers. I tell people, if you, if you could get through 10 seconds of meditation, you're doing good. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> Yay. I agree so with that. The smell lingers for about 10 seconds. I was like, if you don't smell it and your mind starts to wander, you know, but if you keep smelling it, stay there, stay there, stay grounded. Yes. I love it. Thank you. Um, and at the end of the show, I'm going to give everybody ways to connect with these wonderful, beautiful, or gorgeous spirits. Um, Jessica, tell us about... Uh, what can people do to help them in their daily lives stay in this wonderful, beautiful space that you guys have created for yourselves? For me, one of the things that I started noticing is to set an intention. Set an intention as soon as you rise. You know, I basically, as I mentioned before, I do have something that every single day, as soon as I rise, I'm like, I'm grateful. I'm grateful I woke up and what am I here to be of service and create? Then I do my prayer that connects me to my heart. You know, me talking to God, that's what prayer is. And I don't pray like repetitive. Like I am basically like I'm talking to you guys. That's prayer to me. That's yeah. me connecting to source. And then I do have a meditation that I do in nature. Like nature is a big one to me. Like I love, love just going to nature, taking off my shoes. You know, I do what so says. I take my coloring books, I take my crayons, I'll take my books, I'll take my oracle cards, I'll take my crystals. And I just have like my own space by myself and enjoying, like so mentioned, like listening to the birds. Because before I would be overthinking about things that didn't matter. So I think mm -hmm. in nature, you start feeling at peace. You mm -hmm. start connecting to everything. You start observing the birds. Then you see a butterfly. And then you see a ladybug. It puts you very much in the like, enjoy where you are. Yes. Turn off everything. So that has been a major one for me. Setting intention doing my things daily, my rituals and nature. 
Those nice. have self love to me. I love that. Do you know what I do? I yes. actually go for hikes and I find little things. I collect mm-hmm. stuff. And by the end I'm that I'm done, I've made something. I always pick, it's almost like making little Frank and nature creatures, um, you like know, that. and that's, that's what I've always done. And I love them. And then sometimes I'll leave them for someone, right. Or I'll leave them. And I learned that in Whistler, when I was uh, up in the mountains, people would make little, um, what we call inukshuks or inukshuks. And they're to show it's safe home. And they're little, stones that they put on top of each other and what they did with these people was they make little characters all about around the ridges of the cliffs of the mountain and this one guy made a skier and the skis were just over the cliffs so then the next snowfall you knew it was going to go down and I thought wow what an amazing thing to do so I started to collect and create on my hikes so that's my thing in nature so Jessica I am a hundred by the time I'm done it's like a zen meditation it really, truly is. Zmir, what can you offer our viewers tonight? <laughs> Everyone has said that, like, the same word, but um, what comes to my spirit, like, at the top of this, like, to remain in that place of, like, happiness, to stay in that place of, like, alignment, like, what do we do to wake up? It really is setting intention. Mm. our intentions create our reality it brings in the emotion and the feeling to magnetize the reality to us so therefore we are we're talking about intentions if you, if you can if you don't have the intentions or a, a deliberate intention then you're not going into nature yeah if you don't have an intention you're not going to drink the water or set an intention over it. If you don't have a steady like intention to want to be better, want to expand, want to grow every day, every daily, not just every day, but daily, because it's a daily journey, not a day by day. Um, it's a daily journey. So if you're not setting an intention to be intentional about what you are setting intentions for, then you're just walking around trees. Yes. You're walking on grass. Yep. You are filling up space with no intentions. You are not imbuing and setting the chi and the energy around you with purpose. So that that in lies, that also answers why some people are not getting what they feel like they're getting, right? I've learned this on my own very recently because I'm not being honest with the intentions as well. I'm saying words, but not adding the feeling to it to add the experience, to bring in the experience of it. Back to the truth. That truth part, right? That truth, that inner joy, that inner peace. That's that truth. Um, If you are chaotic and going through a lot, then your intentions are all over the place, you're imbalanced, and you can just, you you can walk in nature, you may receive benefits, but it's not going to be the, like, the highest pinnacle of benefits, like what you were saying, like, I deliberately go hike. That's an intention. But some people are peer pressure into go hiking and it's miserable the whole time because that's not what they really want to do. <laughs> and it's so it's about intention. And it's also about what you what's your self-worth and value. What do you appreciate? What what do you see as value in your life mm-hmm. to bring you more happiness? Because I some people may are allergic to plants and stuff. So they probably won't be excited to go into nature. But there's other things you can do, you know, so yeah. many things you can do. Write in your journal. You can create a gr- gratitude altar. You can create an ancestor's altar. You can go, uh, you can just stand in nature and you watch. You just stand outside on your porch. You can go and just sit stand on your there. porch and just enjoy people and walking by. Just be, mm-hmm. yeah. It's so yes, funny you say that. When I was in my 20s, I used to go jogging and I really never liked the city. I'm a country girl. And so I was jogging. I was in the city because I had to go to school. School was in the city. And I was jogging one day and I, I made this conscious decision. I'm going to really look at everything. I'm going to take in the colors. I'm going to take in the yes. cement. I'm going to. Yes. And all of a sudden, the city changed. It was a work of mm-hmm. art. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what the, what just happened? It was probably to this date, one of the most amazing runs I've ever had. You know, it was an awakening of appreciation and how everything can have that appreciation, right? And I went out to that jog with an intent, right? Or at least mm-hmm. I ended the jog with an intent. Intent can come at any mm-hmm. point, right? And it's interesting because I like that each of you said morning because each of you had made mention of doing something in the morning. One of the things I recently learned from a psychologist was that at night, our, um, our subconscious, uh, uh, sorry, in the morning as we're waking up, our subconscious mind is, is wide open. And before we open our eyes, we can set 
intentions and program our day. And so before you open your eyes, you can talk about the gratitude. I want to go for that hike. I want to do this today. Today, I am feeling this. Today, I'm going to go to the gym. Today, I'm going to. And as you do that, you just take that breath and then open your eyes. And when you open your eyes, all of a sudden your conscious mind takes over. And I have been working with this and it's crazy how it changes your day. Crazy how it changes your day, Mm -hmm. you know? So I get that fully. So each of you has been on this path for, I'm going to say forever, for every lifetime. And in each lifetime, you get stronger and stronger and stronger. What's a piece of advice for somebody who's just awakening, somebody who's just stepping on the path or considering stepping on this path of awareness and energy? Because I know a lot of people are scared to, right? Whether it's because they have a deep religious background or because of approval or just because they're scared, they might see a ghost, period, end of story. Um, what would be a piece of advice that you have to them that they can step into this joyfully, right? What, what can you tell them? How, what can you, a piece of advice would you give well, them? I, will, I want to, yeah. I, 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 Cause the spirit has, it's so, this is so beautiful because I was, I had more, I wanted to express about the last thing I just said, but now, no, 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 it's all aligned, right? Because you, you, you stopped me to expound on what you expounded. And now your next question, and I have the answer to that question. And I wanted to come right to you first, which I think is funny too. You know, that was and awesome. I'm like, I hope I don't take the like, oh, so Jessica, like, but this is what source is telling me. Spirit is like, have fun being flexible. Embrace your unknowns. That's like the simplest like answer to on your like beginning journey. Have fun being flexible, meaning so much things gonna come and gonna kind of like distract you, but have fun being flexible. Be, have fun with just shifting your attention and being a part of the whole process. And then also embrace your unknowns, meaning I don't I give up trying to figure it all out. I'm just yeah, gonna be so huge. That is, and I tell people, don't take so seriously. It is a serious thing that you're stepping into, but don't take yes. childlike wonder, right? Children yes. are in this vibration, right? You're going back to your childhood. You're going back to your childlike wonder, you know? So, oh, that's just absolutely awesome. Thank you for that. Soul. Uh, you know, it's, it's pretty much similar. It's a journey. And when you take a journey, um, there's a lot of things that you can gravitate to along your journey and there's a lot of things that you can pick up with you to take with you on your journey so you know one of the things is just be open be loving be kind I was telling someone earlier today when you open up to the world the world opens up to you and just embrace it because it's a beautiful ride it's um there's things that's like man I don't I don't understand I don't get it yet don't worry, just ask the universe and the universe will be like, oh, you, you, oh, you're asking me a question? Okay, here you go. And that's just how it's been working for me. Okay. It's like I ask I like the, the universe, you the universe, you're like, boop, there it is. <laughs> that was so good. So yeah, that's, that's just what it is for me. It's enjoy yeah. the journey. Enjoy yeah. the journey. And I like that, you know, to expand on, be flexible and, you know, embrace it with childlike wonder. It is, it's, it's about being open, just whatever comes. And, you know, a friend of mine and I were talking the other night and it's kind of like going back to basics for me, but, you know, as an energy worker, you guys probably have, have experiences too. You learn one thing and then something else comes and then you're learning another and you're like, oh my God, this is so amazing. And then you go to the next thing. Right. And, and as soon as you hone one, the universe goes, okay, you know yep. what? We're graduating you. Let's get yep. to the next thing. Exactly. So yep. just be, mm-hmm. just grab everything. Just you can. Doing it. Yeah. Just, just pray. And speaking. And it's, it's just, it's beautiful. When you, when I look back on it, it was like when I went down the rabbit hole of YouTube, as we all do at some point in time, it's like, I remember about the aliens and then I remember about the conspiracy theories and then I remember about this. And then, you know, when you get to a point, you're like, you know what? I don't know anything. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, right. back to, I'm back to square one with brand new eyes and I still know nothing. And how exciting is that? Because now there's more to learn. Exactly. I love you know? it. I love that. 
Yeah, yeah. I do. I do. Mm-hmm. Jessica, what would you give us advice? And you're great at this. You're wonderful with beginners. You're wonderful with people who are stepping mm-hmm. on the path. So what would you give us sage wisdom and advice? <laughs> Can I be honest to you? I say, think about it this way. It's kind of like you are starting a whole course meal and it has maybe a three course meal. Mm. Learn to ask for help. That's a big one. Learn to speak clearly to God, the universe and source. Because when I didn't communicate with my guides and everything, I told them, I'm dummy 101 in spirituality. Can you guys send me people to talk to me like that? You Mm. know? And that helped me a lot because spirit was being very clear. Enjoy the journey. Keep in mind, you're like a baby. And like a baby, you're kind of like peeling an onion. You know, what served yesterday may not serve today. Mm -hmm. The way you thought yesterday may not serve today. And make peace with it. Enjoy the journey. You will never feed a baby a three-course meal completely here, food. This is all yours. Never. So the universe is not going to do that to us either. It's going to feed you little by little. Enjoy the journey. Be okay when you're stressed. Be okay when you're depressed. Be okay when you are feeling some type of way. Honor those seasons. Even honor when you're confused. Because all of that serves the purpose. Learn to be in the journey of enjoying the journey, learning how to ask for help and trust that the universe will always got your back no matter what. That's it. Agreed. So we've lost Samir. So he may have had technical difficulties. Um, I just messaged him that he can come right back. So we're going to continue and hopefully he will be able to uh, join us again because he is just so awesome. You guys are amazing. Um, Tell us, please, where people can find you guys. Okay, so yeah, (laughs) since you, you know, um, well, Basically, my name is Jessica, and you're welcome to find me on Instagram under Unconditional Self Love Goddess. So, once you go into my Instagram page, there's a link directly that is a digital business card, and that will give you access to my Facebook, to my Instagram, to Snapchat, my phone number, my email, DM me directly. Basically, Instagram, if you go to Instagram and you write Unconditional Self Love Goddess, you'll be able to find me, go to the main link in my bio, and that has access to everything to connect with me directly. Perfect. Thank you. And Saul, where does everyone find you? And please also tell them about the 40-day love uh, clubhouse room that you have, that you and Jessica both have. Okay, that's going to be fun. So First off, you can find me on Instagram on, under 11, the number, the number 11, one, one, um, underscore soul, S-O-L, underscore 11, again. And then also there's a link there for my link tree. And then you can, you can find me. There's a telephone number. There's contact me. There's all sorts of things there how to get in touch with my Etsy, um, my Etsy store. So, and there's wands and I do all sorts of things because I was a Girl Scout, but I, you know, Girl Scouts, we did crafts. Now I do spiritual crafts. <laughs> so, so yes. Hi, Smear, you're back. I'm Yay! back. I'm so yeah, glad you're back. Mark. Yeah, it's okay. It's all good. It's all good. So tell us about the room that you and Jessica have going right now, the 40 Day Self-Love. So we we're doing a 40 days of self-love. We just finished 40 days of abundance um, and self-love and love because we know we work on our inner and then we start working it on an inner then our outer love. People start attracting it in that way. So it's 40 days. We do affirmations there. We do motivation. We do um, meta beautiful Jessica's meditations are there as well. Um, It's every it's Monday. It's on Mondays. Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays at 222 in Clubhouse. Nice. And you'll see it. Yeah, it's it's That's really awesome. awesome. I love it. Awesome community wow. too. That is awesome. Zmir, where can people find you? Um, they can find me on Clubhouse at Zamir Calais on Instagram at Zamir Calais on Pinterest, LinkedIn, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter. <laughs> 
Periscope. <laughs> Every platform. I mean, any platform you go to is going to be consistently <laughs> in your Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and I am uh, Angel Morgan, and you can find me right here on rogerstv.com backslash raising energy. If you want to uh, get a reading with me for animals or for yourself, you can always find me at raisingenergy.com, angelmorganpetpsychic.com, or on my Instagram page, which I absolutely love too, which is is at Raising Energy and my newest platform, Clubhouse, which we all love. It, it's amazing. What a great forum. Um, it's a wonderful forum where they do rooms and they have all kinds of people and everybody gets to talk and experts. And it's a really, really wonderful, wonderful place. So Clubhouse is a, is a phone app for anybody who's interested out there, but you can find me at Raising Energy. Any parting words? We have one minute. So go quick. Thank you. Thank you. This was so beautiful. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much, Angel. This was truly a pleasure. You're so welcome. Jessica, anything you'd like to say? Parting words. Gratitude. Keep on shining and just take it easy. Life is what you just to make of it. And thank you for inviting us. Thank you. And Zmir. Here I go. Look. <laughs> We have everything we need and more than enough. We are on our aligned path, choosing the path of least resistance. And nothing is in our way but our ego. We let our ego subside and let our love abide. And all love and peace be unto the room. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here tonight. I found this a very, very special episode. And again, if anybody wants to watch this show or more, raising energy, or sorry, rogerstv.com backslash raising energy. Thank you very much, everybody, for being here. And we will see everybody again back here on Raising Energy on Rogers TV Roundtable.